friends and welcome to my channel if you're new or welcome back if you're back. Either way, thank you so so much for clicking on my video today. Um, if you are new, my name is Rabbit and my pronouns are they them and I'm really sorry that I was gone for so long. I really didn't mean to be. I like honestly did film a bunch of videos and then just didn't edit them and just sat on them and I'm probably still sitting on them because I I'm way more motivated to do this video than any of the other videos I've been working on lately and I'm really sorry about that. Yeah, not much has changed except for basically um, I'm a redhead now. Woohoo, love that for me, super fun. And I basically last week just gave myself permission to not worry about YouTube stuff and just do creative projects because that's what I really wanted to do. That's what like my heart was really yearning for and I hadn't felt inspired to make like non-doll clothes in so long and I finally felt inspired to make like people-sized clothes and I didn't think I'd ever like really feel that again or like I, I don't know I was like man I like did my university thing on people-sized clothes and now I've learned about dolls and I guess I'm never gonna make like people-sized clothes again and that's not true I like got super inspired so I got to making a bunch of stuff and I want to show it to you guys because I'm so stoked and yeah again apologies for being gone for so long I don't know I have like so many things to show I'm sorry I got like inspired to go like one by one I guess and show off everything but I want to start by talking about um, the shirt that I'm wearing now um, if you recognize it it's like an Emily the Strange design and it was one of my first forays into DIY stenciling which I can't believe I hadn't tried before and also this is the back Yes, okay. I'm so excited that I found stenciling now. It's like such a fun new art form and I can't believe I never got into it before. I never did because I thought it would be like too tedious to like cut out all the tiny designs, but it turns out that I actually love doing that, especially if I can just like put on a YouTube video or something in the background and I love the results. Um, so on this shirt, we've got Mystery, Nietzsche, Miles, and Sabbath, which are Emily's four cats. And on the back, I have like an angry, not angry, but like kind of a frowning picture of Emily. And this is one of my new favorite tank tops. Um, it's ju it just was originally a red shirt that I got at the thrift store for like a couple of bucks and then I screen printed or not screen printed this but I stenciled this using screen printing ink and um, this vinyl paper that I got at Michael's okay I can't find it I'll put up a picture of what I used um, and basically the reason that I got into doing the stenciling thing and specifically making a bunch of like Emily the Strange stuff because I'll show you the other things that I've been making is because I really got re into a bunch of like my spooky nostalgia stuff recently and one of those things was Emily the Strange and I ordered a bunch of the books online like the chapter books and was rereading those and it was just making me feel so nostalgic so then I was online looking at Emily the Strange clothes because I was like I would love to wear like a little t-shirt or something with like one of the cats on it or something like that um and everything on eBay I swear to god was like $50 for a tank top like this or like $70 for like a little hoodie and I was like come on like this isn't fair normally um like I don't know the, the, there's like some issues with like copyright infringement but in my opinion if it's just like for yourself it's fine to like copy a mass-produced image onto a t-shirt so you can have a very cheap t-shirt of the thing that you love or a band logo or whatever it is in my opinion there's nothing wrong with that as far as like big characters and like stuff like that goes so yeah, I didn't want to spend $50 on a t-shirt, but I did want to have some t-shirts, and this is like one of my new favorite tank tops, like I said, like I'm so freaking stoked on it. Um, I also did this tank top. This was the first one that I stenciled. It has, I think, Mystery and Sabbath, yeah mystery and sabbath on it it's just like red um i figured that like emily the strange stuff is like perfect for stenciling because the lines are like pretty jagged and irregular so it doesn't really matter if you like mess up a little bit and it tends to be in like really stark colors which is like what you want for stenciling you don't want tons of detail stuff you want like big chunks of black and white that you can just like mismatch. Um, one issue that I ran into with this tank top specifically is that I splattered ink on the top of it when I was screen printing because I was so excited and I was just like using my little makeup sponge to, to do the, I keep saying screen printing but I mean stenciling. I'm just messing up because I use screen printing ink. Um, but to cover up my little splotch on the top I just put this like little the red embroidery stitches. It was supposed to blend in, but it doesn't blend in very much. But either way, I'm super happy with the final result of that. Um, I might add, or like, I might do some more modifications on that, but we shall see. The other Emily the Strange thing that I DIY'd is down here. This is, I was so stoked on this. I wore this to work the other day because I just was like, oh my god, I'm so excited about this. Also with this, I wore it to work today. I meant to finish up some of the details. As you can tell, so, like I meant to 
fix that and like maybe fix the tail and like maybe put like some lines on the collar but I just can't be bothered right now and I was like so excited to wear this shirt that I just was like it's good enough um but I will probably fix it up this this is what I was so stoked on because when I saw this design online I was like I want a little like something with that on and then when I found this piece at the thrift store it was basically like a little red hoodie with the sleeves cut off and like cropped and stuff and I was like oh my god that's like so nostalgic like early like y2k like which is normally like I don't care about trends and stuff but I have like such a thing for like nostalgia and like trolls and monster high and like sure why not throw y2k into it so i found that hoodie and then i found this um d design that like emily the strange has that i was like oh my god i need that on a hoodie i'm obsessed with it i wear it to work all the time because i work at a cat's cafe it's like a i love bad kitties t-shirt but the heart is like mystery i'm obsessed with it it's so freaking cute i wore it with like a mesh shirt to work the other day and i just felt like so adorable and cool and like yeah i might um make this a little more distressed and like add some chains and patches and stuff like that but for now i even just like love it like that like it's so cute so simple like normally i'm not into super simple clothes like that but like oh finally i have like emily the strange merch unofficial stolen fake emily the strange merch but i'm obsessed and i love it okay i also made a bunch of patches of emily the strange stuff when I was kind of just like testing out some different techniques. So I think, yeah, this was the very first thing I ever stenciled. It worked out really good and was like, yes, if this is how it is, then let's do it. Um, this was the second one, a little more tricky, but I still enjoy the result. This is the same design that I printed and put on a jewelry box in a DIY that I can link if you are interested. Then I did an experiment that did not turn out, but I'll show it to you guys because it's important to try things even if they mess up in DIYs because, you know, you gotta break some eggs to make an omelet or whatever they say. So I tried a reverse thing with the Emily the Strange. Didn't really like the result, but you know, we gotta try some things to figure out what we like and we don't like and it's okay. Um, and then this is really exciting because my dad actually came over today because um, when I went to talk to him a couple days ago, I was talking about how um, I couldn't find any freezer paper because they don't sell it freaking anywhere. And freezer paper is this thing that apparently a lot of people like to use for stenciling because it's like paper on one side and kind of plasticky on the other side and it's what butchers and stuff use for wrapping up meat. And my dad has a friend who works in a cheese like at a cheese counter kind of place so we asked him if he could have like some of the cheese paper so he sold him some for 50 cents and i tried it um this was attempt number one attempt number two is somewhere down there um the thing that i will say between vinyl paper and uh, freezer paper freezer paper is way easier to cut through um i was way less sore because um cutting through vinyl like oh my god i was like oh my god my shoulder was really really hurting the other day cutting through freezer paper was like no problem but i found that um vinyl gave me much cleaner edges than freezer paper don't know if you can tell freezer paper vinyl I don't know. Either way, I like them both, and um, I'd say use whatever you are more comfortable with or have access to um, if it comes down to it. You can also use mylar and like a bunch of other stuff, um, but I wanted something that I could stick down and then peel off and not have residue um, to make sure that I got like nice clean lines. Okay, the last Emily the Strange stuff that I made was <sighs> the story of this. Okay, so basically, when a, a couple, like maybe a month ago or something, I saw this um, Emily the Strange plush on Facebook Marketplace and it was for like 20 bucks and it was so cute, but I like didn't feel like driving and messaging and like doing the whole thing. And I was like, oh, it's 20 bucks. I'm sure I'll find it like somewhere else for equally cheap. It's like not a problem. No, because every freaking Emily the Strange plush I've looked at since has been like $200 on eBay. And I was like, okay, I don't want to spend $200 on a freaking plushy like that's just like not fair and it was making me feel so bitter about like not um having just bought that one for like 25 dollars because like what was i thinking what the frick was wrong with me but it's okay because that led to the creation of fake cat number one a little bit floppy <laughs> a little bit silly and kind of dorky looking but i made this guy um, and basically, um, the reason that I really wanted a fake cat was because in one of the Emily the Strange books, um, when her cats go missing, she gets really sad about it and decides to make, like, an amalgamation of all the cats 
as like fake cat to like keep her company and there's like a little illustration of it and it's like so cute and um yeah i wanted something like that but then i also looked online and there's like a bunch of different plushie designs um and i wanted one of those so i kind of um combined two plushie designs i'll show the ones because i wanted it to be like kind of cute um but also like since i didn't have all the right fabric we have like kind of a bat pattern on this side and this other bat pattern and this fabric used to be like on my ceiling <laughs> when i was like 20 in university and um the legs look really silly and um he's very floppy and yeah this is fake cat he doesn't have a tail because tuna doesn't have a tail my cat and i figured why not pay homage to tuna and also i was too lazy to put a tail so yeah fake cat number one pretty happy with it um but yeah um this was my first time making a plushie from scratch i've been doing a lot of plushie modification which is another thing that i could show in this video but it's gonna be so long that i'm just gonna make a separate video of all my plushie diys modification collection I'll, I'll show a sneak peek or something in this one but um yeah this was my first time making a plushie from scratch because all my modifications beforehand have been taking plushies from the thrift store and secondhand and stuff and like sewing them together this one was fully from scratch with my own pattern that i made so <laughs> first try a little bit floppy it's okay um i'm pretty happy with him um fake cat one okay the second one when i was 14 maybe i had this knockoff skull animals plush that was like a little green mint green unicorn kind of plushy maybe or something and i had a skull animals face and it wasn't like an official skull animals but it was so cute and i got it at this goth store in edmonton no in like vancouver and bc somewhere and it was just like my favorite thing and i can't believe i gave it away and i've been like really missing that ever since and every time i've looked at skull animals on friggin depop etsy ebay whatever they're also stupidly overpriced so i decided to try to make my own one and also this was one of the designs that like Miles came in of like the Emily the Strange collection. So this is um, Miles as a skeleton plushie. Um, really, really pleased, or like as a skull animal plushie, really, really pleased with how he turned out. I made him out of this blanket material. It was like a Sears blanket. And I'll show you the other thing that I made out of it because I got it at the thrift store for like six bucks and made him and a couple of other things. Um, I don't know if you can hear, but I did use um, Beanie Baby beads in him because I had a bunch of leftover Beanie Baby beads from when I was deconstructing and reconstructing all my monster plushies. Um, but yeah, Miles, adorable, really happy with him. He's like so soft, super, super huggable and like snuggly and stuff. All the um, bones, I just cut out of felt. Um, so pleased, so pleased with little skeleton miles. Cage really likes him too. He thinks it looks really symmetrical and really good. And um, yeah, okay. The last plush that I made. <sighs> okay, I was trying to make a book accurate fake cat, um, but there's only one picture of it. I'll, I'll insert it here. And I did try my best, but the thing looks a little goofy and like maybe it's still cute. No, he's still cute. I always like, whenever I very first make things I think they look bad and then I have to like give it a day and then look at it again I'm like nah it's, it's okay um so this is book accurate fake cat fake cat too I guess <laughs> and the thing that I liked about this is that it has one of the elements of all of the kitties he has the chipped ear like sabbath he has the star in his eye like mystery he has the missing eye like miles and he has the striped tail like Nietzsche um <laughs> when I first made this guy he was like kind of plump so I just like put some safety pins in the back of him to kind of make him like weird and long as he kind of looks in the book but you know he worked out okay and i used this like really pretty fabric for his top half that oh oh there's like needles still stuck in him i use this really pretty um yeah fabric for his top half that's like got these like little skulls and like bats and stuff like that and then for a lot of him i use that like same um plushy oh my god his nose fell off that same plushy blanket material. Uh -huh. He looks a little bit like a football, but it's okay. It's, uh, yeah, they didn't make, they, no one ever created, it seemed, like, to sell or produce or whatever, a, like, book accurate fake cat. So I wanted to try my hand at it. His tail looks like a lemur tail, so ignore that and be nice to me about my fake cats, okay? Thank you. Um, and they're like fake cats in more ways than one, because it's like fake cat as in, you know, like from the book, but also fake cat because they're like knockoff, un un not real Emily the Strange merchandise, you know, they're just like my little stealing, my stealing designs. Evil stealing, okay, I'm theft. But like from big corporations and companies and people who are charging like $400 for a freaking plushie on eBay. Like I think it's okay to steal stuff like that, right? 
Like when you put all your own effort into it, eh, it's, it's, uh, please no one come like policing me in this one, okay? <laughs> all right, now it's time to get into the clothes. I made a frick ton of clothes because I guess, I guess the way that it started was I wanted like some oversized collars or like detachable collars and stuff um, just so I could like spice up some really basic dresses that I have. So um, the first one that I made, I tried like making it following this um, tutorial that I'll link below. Um, it's got like bats on it and it ties with a ribbon closure. It's reversible so it's like white on the other side. It's like a very short collar, um, really easy to make, um, but a little bit too short for my taste and I wanted like a really oversized one. So then I went experimenting into oversized collar territory and they are all um, reversible and I love them. I've been wearing the F out of these. They make me feel super freaking cute. So this first one is with this like bat and skull pattern um, that I got at Fabricland around Halloween. I think it looks so precious um obviously like with a longer shirt or something under it but um yeah it's like this kind of gray and black on one side and then on the other side it's this actually glow in the dark skeleton cats and owls and a little boo and it's like very like halloween corny which is like an aesthetic that i love on this side and then it's like a little bit more like elegant subtle <laughs> A little bit maybe on the other side. Um, either way, I think they're both really, really cute and um, I love that this side glows in the dark. Um, so, so cool. Both of these fabrics were from Fabricland at Halloween last year. Then another one that I made is this big boy. And I'm like so mad because in my YouTube like recommended or whatever, I got this video that was like trends that are over in like what year are we in? 2022? Trends that are over like now or whatever. One of the things was like oversized collar and the other thing was like trousers that I like and the other thing was like another thing that I like and I was like, who are you? Like go away. Like I don't care. <laughs> Leave me be. Uh, this one is I guess not really reversible but it is lacy which was like a kind of fun little variation on um, what I had made before for collars. Um, so just like super oversized big adorable collar. A little bit it makes me feel like I'm wearing a bib which I don't love. Um, so I put some enamel pins in it and then it makes it feel like a little bit more, um, less like a bib and more like a cool accessory. Um, but yeah, always wearing like white things around my neck, I get a little bit of that bib feeling, which is like really hard for me and I don't like it. Uh, aha, there's the other one. Okay, this one is probably my favorite. It's the one I've been wearing the most lately anyway. Um, more Halloween fabric from Fabricland. This is one of my favorite fabrics that I've ever found there. It's got these like adorable kind of like spooky cats on um, witch hats and they just like look like they got into mischief and I love them so much. And there's also like little bats on it and it's like purple on the background. And I um, just put around it like this lavender, really pretty lace. It's like very delicate and I just got at the thrift store. I think it's so cute. I really like these rounded collars, but um, I've also been meaning to experiment with more like pointed collars and stuff like that. Um, on the other side, I have just kind of like a night sky scene. This fabric I got from ages ago, ago. I don't even remember from where, but I really, really like this one. I've been wearing the purple side a lot to work. Um, and then I was experimenting with bat wing shaped collars. Um, if you saw one of my Monster High redesign videos, you might have seen this bat wing shaped collar from this brand called Man Trap, and I was like, that's like an amazing idea. And I also have this dress that has a bat wing shaped collar. And like, if you look online, there's a bunch of people that have made bat wing shaped collars. So I figured I'd try my own hand at it. First one didn't really work as well as I want it to. It looks like a jester collar to me. So um, this side is like pumpkins, and then the side is like pink bunnies and both of them feel like a jester collar. I think the reason is because it feels too puffy. Um, I did the reversible thing and when you're working with these points I just don't think it lends itself to it that well which um, brings me to another failed attempt which I'll show you because you know sometimes we mess up. This was kind of another prototype of the bat wing collar and it just looks like a it doesn't hang right, it doesn't sit right, it's weird and wrinkly and the fabric isn't great and it, it was just like kind of a mess. So like sometimes we mess things up and it's okay and we make like little weird jester capes. So it's okay if you mess it up, just try again. Um, so then, then I was like, all right, let's try to do a single layer and that seemed to be the ticket as well as doing like a more single point in the back instead of multiple points. Um, otherwise it tends to feel a little gestury on me. Um, this material was originally from Nurses Scrubs, which I find that, um, yeah, there's always really good Halloween fabric in the Nurses Scrub section for some reason at the thrift store. Um, so yeah, it's got like little spiders and like a little blue delicate spider web and just like a cute little bat wing collar. Love it. Um, this one is in progress. But it's basically done and it's like the same idea. Um, I just really like that red and black striped fabric, even though it feels a little piratey. 
but like yeah this is kind of what it looks like on I think it's freaking cute. I just need to put a closure on this one, but I wanted to do something a little more fancy um, than just a ribbon. And then I did a lace batwing collar. Ignore the fact that there's purple on it. I didn't really think through using a marker as my tracing thing and not checking if it was washable first. So I still don't know if it is. We'll have to find out together um, later. But yes, this lace material, you will see so many things in this DIY haul made out of this lace material because I got this set of curtains. It was, it's like one piece of curtain and it was $4.99 and I got it at the thrift store and it's like polyester curtains and it's made out of this material, this lace, and I made so many freaking things out of it and I still have a whole freaking curtain left. It's very exciting. Uh, let me show you. Okay, this freaking um, the best place in my opinion to get secondhand large swaths of fabric that are like beautiful and lacy and delicate and like everything that your heart desires is the curtain section or the bedding section of the thrift store because you can find stuff like this for like $4.99 and this is everything that's left after like all the things that I will show you I like used up the majority of this side it's like a little bit just tatters but regardless let me start with showing you the other lacy white creations oops that is lacy black um, so, number one. Okay, this was the first attempt at something with the fabric. Um, it's kind of a button-up um, little capelet thing. It's very sweet looking. It's a little bit too, like, little bow beep for my tastes. But if I ever try to do a more, like, Lolita-inspired kind of garment, I think that would be good. This was kind of a prototype to see if I could make, like, circle capes, capelet things um because i had watched this video oh my god i'll have to put the video of who it was um I'll, I'll link them here um they had this video of their like recent like outfit things that they've been wearing and one of the things was like this black lace cape and i like got so fixated on it and i was like i need to figure out how to get a black lace cape in my life because i did not know they were that beautiful i mean i'd seen them on dark and love before but they're so freaking pretty um so yeah this was kind of a prototype with the curtain material it's fine but it's not really like nah. okay uh, prototype number two with the curtain material was um, kind of I wanted to go for a more severe like square collar cape thing so I was like all right can, can we try a square instead of a circle and make it like a little bit more tight and I also made it like button up um, and that was the result of this I'll probably like have to insert little clips of me in all of these like properly do we see this it feels kind of like a school lady like a school mistress Headmistress? So yeah, this? This feels a little bit like um, an administrative person in the 1900s or something. I don't know. Um, I'll, I'll insert a proper picture. It's very square and severe and etc etc. So that was attempt number two. It's fine. It's like a good um, look that I'll have to like work more into because I tend to dress I guess in a more like childish way than more mature way in in most of my outfits normally i feel like when i was younger i was wearing a lot more stuff to try to look a little bit older and now i wear stuff that people are like why are you dressing like a child and i'm like i'm not that's just what i like to wear what are you talking about anyway um it is what it is he <laughs> okay this was the next one and it's triangular because i had seen this really pretty picture of someone wearing like this really pretty clown outfit and it had like a triangular kind of neck piece and this uh, this kind of triangle neck piece i i see it a lot in nightgowns i i think it's like such a beautiful and cool shape for like a collar so i thought i'd try to make like a detachable one so i can just stick it on whatever i like even though yeah i made most of these out of white lace because i find that if I made them out of black, I might wear them less since um, most of my outfits are black and they might like blend in too much. So it would be good to have like something with a higher degree of contrast. So this one, I guess you could wear it with the buttons in the front or in the back. I originally designed it to be buttoned in the back, but for sake of putting this on in a timely fashion, I will button it in the front. But yeah, this one I really, really like. Um, it feels like an old timey dress. Like when I put it on top of another dress, it just like transforms it into a like much more like elegant, like, ooh lady the the lady of the manor you know it, it feels very that um so yeah this was kind of i, I was trying to i want to dress like a vampire sorry i'm like back in my vampire era i like forgot <laughs> how much like i don't know i feel like 
I was talking to Cage about this the other day and I was like, I just wish I could like show little 14 year old me like, look at all the stuff we get to make and look at all the materials we get access to and look at like the fact that like we can actually make stuff that's like fun and like cool and it actually like works out now because like 14 year old me would have loved to make something like this but just would not have had the um, skills to execute it in a proper way and I just like wish I could show them and be like, look, look, we made this, we made this together, isn't that cool? Or like, I don't know. This is stupid. Anyway, next, the capelets, the black ones. Um, these are super fun. So I'll start with the first um, prototype. Um, this was number one. I used um, a curtain from the thrift store as this kind of like base fabric. It's um, see-through because I, again, was going through for that like lace cape. Um, the top collar is actually, <laughs> you know when you get like those stockings at the dollar store for Halloween that are like lacy top? It's like the top of one of those lacy stockings. Um, the closure is these bats um, that I got in a bag of bats for bulk online. Um, there's a bunch of places that sell them, craft stores, AliExpress, Amazon if you want to go there. Um, you know, th these kind of things are really really great for making jewelry and closures and stuff like that and it just makes it feel extra spooky and vampire-y and the lace part of it at the bottom was a thrifted scarf that <laughs> I was hoping would have enough of this lace fabric to go around the whole way but it didn't so I had to like cut the other half of it that had this weird like polka dot D fabric but Cage said it looked intentional and I hope he's right. Um, and then <laughs> This is like not the most professional closure. I just used a one of these, one of these little hooks, um, but it does make me feel like a fancy vampire when I wear it. Yeah, vampire vibes. No, like it's not with this top, obviously, but like it, it kind of works. Anyway, um, I feel like my battery is probably dying, so I should probably rush through the rest of these. Um, so next thing, um, this was kind of. I'll try to make it again in a better way, but it was supposed to be a batwing cape because I've always wanted one of those. Um, I made it out of the really fuzzy blanket that I also made um, Mr. Skull Animal Miles out of. Um, the back I embroidered these batwings on, the front I put these little bats on. It's very very cozy. The top has a lace um, collar and like it buttons with a big silver button that I found at the thrift store. Um, it looks too much like a jester cape again and I think the problem was that I doubled it by tr for like trying to make the edges look really clean. I, tr I like sewed it inside out and then turned it the other way, but it just, it doesn't work with the way that the fabric hangs. I, I don't really like it. So I'll try to redo that. This turned out perfectly. I wore this to a cemetery date with my boyfriend um, having a picnic and I just felt incredible. Um, I'm obsessed with this. It's my little version of the lace capelet that I saw on that one YouTuber and I just like fell in love with. Um, so obsessed with this. Um, the top is velvet lace that I got for $9 for half a yard which was awesome because it was on sale and then this lace at the bottom I got it for like four dollars and it was on sale. It's eyelash lace and it's so friggin pretty so I'm obsessed with it. Um, then to make, to match this I wanted little gloves so I used some um, old um, thrifted like velvet sweatpants <laughs> that were black to make the top of them and then to make it so they would lace up tight I put some grommets and some satin ribbon and then I used the same eyelash lace um, that I used on the base of this to make them kind of flare out at the bottom so they're like fancy little gloves and they match the cape because I wanted a little matching set because I just think like little gloves are so fancy I think they're so cool oh my god my camera's like overheating, dying, ha melting um, really quick uh, this mesh shirt I got at the thrift store it was originally like a turtleneck and it looks so dumb and it was so smelly with like perfume I, the person who wore this wore so much perfume and it was horrible so I washed it a lot and cut off the turtleneck and then embroidered this bat pattern on it because I've seen a lot of like kind of 90s goth outfits that have these like fishnet shirts with like bats and crosses and like cool things embroidered on them and I just think it's such a beautiful thing and like the velvet and the fishnet is like so like 90s goth in my opinion and I just want to emulate that because <laughs> uh, it's such a good fashion style and stuff and last but not least this is a skirt that I made out of Halloween tablecloth um I saw someone else do something like this on some Facebook group ages ago and I wish I screenshotted it but I couldn't find it. did have to button it since it didn't sit properly otherwise. Um, but yeah, it's like the spider web fabric with like haunted houses and bats at the bottom and ghosts and like all this incredible stuff and it's sheer so it's like perfect to layer over other things. And then this is my other freezer paper stencil that I made. As you can see it's like not super sharp. Um, my camera's overheating. Thank you so much for bearing with me through this friggin process of showing you all the stuff that I made. I really hope you enjoyed it and I'm sorry for being gone for so long and I hope you have a great rest of your day or night or whenever you're watching this and see you in the next one I hope. Bye!